Hello and welcome to Business Daily, coming to you live from Seoul. I'm Lee ji -yun. Hope you're ready to start this morning with some fresh business news coming out of Korea. But first, let's take a closer look at what we're going to go over later in the show. Bleak projections as Korea's central bank lowers its growth and inflation forecasts for this year. We look at the effects on the Korean economy. From bathrooms to bedrooms, smart gadgets are helping people to stay healthy in a whole new, different way. The ninth edition to Korea's chain of creative economy innovation centers has opened in the country's southeastern Gyeongsangnam-do province, Korea's traditional manufacturing hub. The government wants to transform traditional factories into smart factories that are equipped with automated and remote controllable systems as a way of combining machinery and ICT. 지금 세계 제조업은 기계 공학과 전자 공학의 융합이라는 메카트로니스 혁명을 맞이하고 있습니다. 세계적인 ICT 기술과 강력한 제조업 기반을 가지고 있는 우리가 업종 간 창의적인 융합을 이루어낸다면 모두가 깜짝 놀랄 새로운 부가가치를 창출해 낼수 있을 것입니다. The center will also look into ways to foster the water industry into a future growth engine. A world-leading firm in seawater desalination, Tucson Heavy Industries and Construction is also set to help smaller firms launch their businesses in the field. Samsung's ambitious new line of smartphones, Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, have hit the markets on this Friday. Launching in 20 countries, analysts predict a flagship phones with state-of-the-art performance Wireless charging and sleek designs will help the electronics giant rebound from its global market share, currently in the 10% range. With no competition from new Apple handsets for the next six months, analysts expect Galaxy sales to increase largely and help Samsung win back the top spot in the smartphone market. The 32-gigabyte S6 will cost around 780 U.S. dollars. The Edge will fetch around 890 dollars. Korea's government bonds rallied on Thursday after the Bank of Korea kept its benchmark interest rate at 1.75 percent following last month's surprise rate cut. The yield on Korea's three-year bonds once again fell to a record low, dropping under 1.7 percent for the first time. Yields on five, 10, 20-year government bonds also dropped. Taewoo Security say the positive sentiment will likely continue until next month's monetary policy review meeting, as the possibility of a further rate cut remains. Combine healthcare devices and Internet of Things, and you might meet a world that you never thought was possible. And now, from bathrooms to bedrooms, one can find sophisticated healthcare gadgets that can provide easier tools to help him or stay healthy in a smarter way. Our Eunice Kim has the story. A woman is brushing her teeth with a smart electric toothbrush. This internet-connected household device provides users with feedback on their brushing habits to help them maintain a healthy routine. The smartphone app highlights the area they should be brushing correctly or alerts them when they should reduce pressure. We have developed this toothbrush that connects with the smartphone and to the app that we also provide because we want to help our consumers to get better brushes. This eye mask has sensors inside, and they analyze the user's biosignals, such as their heartbeat, respiratory conditions, and brain waves. Based on big data analysis, the mask induces a good night's sleep by adjusting the sound and light to suit individual taste. We're developing high-end technology that provides the optimal sleeping conditions by connecting home appliances that control the atmosphere of the room, like the temperature, humidity, light, and sound. From a self-urine testing app to a home workout trainer at your fingertips, smart healthcare devices are here to stay. With the ever-increasing medical needs of an aging society, the market for a smart health care system infused with the Internet of Things should satisfy people's growing interest in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. 
For many young people here in Korea, landing a job can look a lot more daunting than before. As the youth unemployment rate stood at its highest yet in over 15 years in February. But what if there were schools that could almost guarantee you employment? Here's our Lee Ji-young to tell us more. Coats on and ready for action. These students from Korea Food Meister High School are busy carrying out experiments related to work in the food industry. I like how I can receive university education at my high school and get trained professionally. Most students here have already secured jobs upon admission to this special school. This is because the school has signed deals with a number of companies to have their students employed right after graduation. Our students get to learn about quality control and manufacturing processes, all directly related to working in the industry. The goal of this school is to produce young talents equipped with specific skills required in the workplace. It's one of the 44 Meister high schools in the country that the government began launching in 2008. Employers also welcome students from these schools. All the newly employed have to go through a certain period of training, but I think that will be significantly shorter for them. The employment rate at these Meister schools was over 90% in 2014. 38 percent were employed by large companies and 46 percent by small and mid-sized firms. The jobs they land range from farming to relatively new industries like in new media. With such desirable results, competition to get into these schools is getting fiercer. Lee ji Business Daily. Darkened prospects for strong momentum and economic recovery came as the Bank of Korea lowered its growth and inflation forecast for this year. We'll talk to our economics correspondent about this in just a bit. The Bank of Korea decided to keep its interest rate steady at 1.75 percent and lower the economic growth outlook for this year to 3.1 percent. The Bank of Korea on Thursday announced it will freeze its benchmark interest rate while downgrading growth outlook by 0.3 percentage points, citing weak exports, slow spending and low investor sentiment. With bleaker projections for this year, some believe the current key interest rate may not be low enough to spur the economy and that the BOK is only checking the water by holding its rate this month. Now, with these new projections, the question is on whether or not the current measures are enough to pep up the economy. To tell us more, our economics correspondent Shin Se-min joining us this morning. Welcome to the program, Se-min. Hi, Ji-yoon. All right, so what does the bank's decision imply and what were the reactions in the market? The Bank of Korea's decision basically underlines the fact that the Korean economy is still not picking up sufficiently. And many market watchers believe that the decision comes as the BOK continues to wait and see whether the effects of the record low interest rate are kicking in. But they believe that the current rate is not accommodating enough to support the growth. Listen to this. The current rate is low, but I think there might be the need to lower it even further. If the growth rate and inflation rate are not meeting projections, the central bank should further cut the rate to resolve the problem. Some experts even say that the central bank kept the rate steady simply to avoid the back-to-back -back, uh, rate cut this month, but said the BOK needs to further slash its benchmark rate sometime in the first half of the year. All right. Well, but then we heard from our expert on Wednesday, contrary to those opinions, the household uh, debt, the ballooning household debt, you know, they're worried that this could add to the burden. 
You're right. The BOK's monetary policy may spur domestic spending and consumer spending as well to a certain point, but it also comes with a flip side. Prompting consumers to take out more loans. One of the other issues is whether the initial rate cut even had any significant effects. Korea Central Bank held its key rate at an all-time low after th um, three cuts since August, but analysts say that there should have been stronger signs by now that the monetary easing policy is producing results. So now the market watchers say that the interest rate cut should go hand in hand with long-term structural reforms. All right. Well, let's turn to the inflation forecast. The central bank revised it by lowering it one percentage points from January, putting it in the zero percent range. What are some concerns stemming from that? Yes, the inflation rate was bumped down to zero point nine percent, and if these projections are met this year, that could put it at the lowest inflation rate since 1999. The low global oil prices could further exacerbate the problem. The, uh, the central bank governor said that so far the domestic economy has shown few signs of improvement and maintained that the consumer sentiment has not yet recovered. The low inflation rate outlook is hinting that Korea may be headed to a period of deflation. The government has been refuting claims of such about the Korean economy, but with the low inflation rate coupled with the low growth outlook, on top of the unemployment rate, it is difficult to have a positive forecast at this point. Now, with that said, experts have been prompting the government to increase structural reforms like maximizing the number of quality jobs and raising minimum wage, things that have been re um, reiterated for some time now. And without such measures, many are skeptical that other changes will be significant enough to pick up the speed of the recovery. Now, because at this point, the low to middle um, income earners are only opening their pockets for insurance and pension funds and other inevitable costs. All right, let's hope to see some measures that would probably, hopefully, uh, improve some economic agents. Thanks for coming in today, Simon. My pleasure. All right, that wraps up today's broadcast of Business Daily. Have a good start to your weekend for those of you here in Korea, and join us right back here on Arirang on Monday. Until then, bye-bye.